Governor Holcomb, Congressman Banks, Congressman Bouchon, Pastor Rick Hawks and Kathy, my fellow Hoosiers from near and far, it is great to be back home again. And it's great to be back home in the Hoosier State, just 12 days away from another great victory all across Indiana and all across America. But thank you all for coming out, and it's a particular honor to be here. The man you just heard from a few moments ago, he's actually the second-ranking Republican in the United States House of Representatives, but America came to know him a few short years ago. After tragedy struck in his life, they saw him as a man of courage, a man of convictions. I can tell you he is one of the most courageous conservatives in the United States of America. Would you join me in thanking Congressman Steve Scalise? Thank you for being in the Hoosier State. Looking around here, I'm seeing so many good friends, I'm going to start to get all choked up. And finally, it's great to be here with a man who's literally been a friend of mine for decades. And I like to say that uh, in 2016, he was the second most surprised man in Indiana. I mean, literally. When I got the phone call to join the national ticket, it wasn't too long before that that he got a phone call to join my ticket. And he has simply gone on to be one of the best governors in America. Would you join me in thanking Governor Eric Holcomb? It's so good to be with so many friends. And if you have a chair, you can feel free to take it. But I'm here for one reason and one reason only. And that is that Indiana and America need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. And right after you get that done, let's get four more years of Governor Eric Holcomb in the State House. You know, four years ago, here in the Hoosier State and all across this country, a movement was born. It was a movement of everyday Americans from every walk of life. Here in Indiana, we believed we could be strong again. We believed we could be prosperous again. We said yes to President Donald Trump in 2016, and I know Indiana is going to say yes to four more years of President Donald Trump in 2020. And let's make Indiana first on the board to re-elect President Donald Trump. You know, the President uh, is in Nashville today. He and I chatted this morning, and uh, he headed out for a presidential debate. He is going to take the stage in just a few hours and he is going to take the fight straight to Joe Biden, and I can't wait. <laughs> you know, just a few weeks ago, uh, we had a little vice presidential debate out in Salt Lake City, Utah. Thank you. Some people think we did all right. But I can tell you it was a privilege for me to be on that stage, to be able to talk about all that we've accomplished together over the last three and a half years and what we can still do with four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. I mean, think about it. Four years ago, we inherited a military that had been hollowed out by devastating budget cuts, an economy 
It was struggling to break out of the slowest recovery since the Great Depression. Terrorism was on the rise around the world. And we witnessed a steady assault on our most cherished values. But in three short years, we rebuilt our military. We revived our economy. We secured our border, supported law enforcement, and stood for life, liberty, and the Constitution of the United States. I mean, it's amazing to think what we accomplished in those first three years. It all starts, of course, with our national defense. You know, after years of one budget cut after another that literally caused a large portion of our Air Force to be kept on the ground the year we took office, to be used as spare parts to keep other aircraft in the air. President Donald Trump signed the largest investment in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. You know, and for me, it's personal. You know, when we started out in politics in Indiana 20 years ago, our, our kids were about the age of your kids, Jim. They were little. Our son was six. Our daughters were five and four. Now our son's a captain in the United States Marine Corps. And our daughter is married to a Navy pilot currently deployed. And I'm proud to report on their behalf as your Vice President and as a proud dad and proud father-in-law, we are finally giving our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard the support that they deserve. We're doing it. And it's not just been about those who wear the uniform and their families. It's also been about all of you who served in our military in the course of your lives. In fact, before I go further, if, uh, if you're able to stand or just raise your hand, if, uh, if you served in the armed forces of the United States, would you, would you just raise your hand and let us be able to thank you one more time? Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. God bless you. You know, when Joe Biden was vice president, you all remember, America saw years of scandal at the VA that shocked the conscience of our nation. We literally had America's heroic veterans dying in waiting lines, waiting for health care at our VA facilities. But when President Donald Trump walked into the Oval Office, all that changed. President Trump has signed the most sweeping reforms of the VA in 50 years. We fired more than 3,000 employees that weren't giving our veterans the care they deserve, and Veterans Choice is now available for every veteran in America. And none of that would have been possible without our partners in the Congress. And standing here in his own hometown, I can tell you firsthand, none of that would have been possible without the extraordinary leadership of a veteran serving on the House Armed Services Committee and the Veterans Committee. Would you join me in thanking Congressman Jim Banks for being there for our veterans and our troops. What a great guy. So it's been about providing for the common defense and being there for our veterans. And in our first three years, after Joe Biden spent eight years trying to 
spend and tax and regulate us and bail us back to a growing economy. President Donald Trump created the greatest economy in American history. It's true. It's amazing to think, in the midst of a global pandemic, Joe Biden actually wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion. Now, President Trump, he cut taxes across the board for working families and businesses large and small. We rolled back more federal red tape than any administration in history. We fought for free and fair trade, unleashed American energy, and in just three short years, businesses large and small created more than 7 million good-paying jobs, including 88,000 jobs right here in the Hoosier State. In those first three years, unemployment reached a 50-year low, and wages rose at their fastest pace than any time in the last 10 years. And what means the most to the President and me is wages rose most rapidly for hardworking, blue-collar Americans. The forgotten men and women of America were forgotten no more. It's true. And when it comes to jobs here in the Hoosier State, you know, I always used to tell people in Indiana we do two things well. We make things and we grow things. And we sell them not only around the country, but we sell it all over the world, don't we? So when it comes to trade, trade means jobs in Indiana. And you all deserve to know, when we took office, half of our international trade deficit was with communist China. And Joe Biden never lifted a finger to do anything about it. In fact, Joe Biden has been a cheerleader for communist China all along the way. He said the rise of China was a, a positive development, and he dismissed the notion that China was even a competitor of the United States. But under President Donald Trump, we put China on notice. We said the era of economic surrender is over. We impose tariffs on China and will keep standing strong until they open up their markets to what we make and what we grow. And closer to home, we all remember NAFTA, right? In the 25 years after NAFTA was signed, here in Indiana and around the heartland, we literally saw entire communities shuttered as 60,000 factories were closed. And many of those jobs were moved south of the border and overseas. And again, Joe Biden and the Democrats always talked a lot about what was wrong with NAFTA, but they never did a thing to change it. But the man who wrote The Art of the Deal, he got America a better deal. NAFTA is gone and the USMCA is here to stay. And when it comes to energy, Joe Biden and the radical left want to crush American energy and American jobs under a $2 trillion version of the Green New Deal. You know, the president had to remind him at the last presidential debate that he supported the Green New Deal. And he just might remind him again tonight. I mean, I mean, the Green New Deal on, on their campaign website is essentially the same as AOC's Green New Deal. And that's according to USA Today. But the Green New Deal actually would require the retrofitting of four million business buildings to million homes would raise the cost of electricity for every home and business in Indiana and in America. President Trump, he's been a champion for American energy. We ended the war on coal, expanded energy production all over America, and we're now a net exporter of energy for the first time in 70 years.
We're energy independent. You know, when Joe Biden was vice president, America actually lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. And the president back then said they were never coming back. You know, I got to tell you, I don't have to tell you out here in Indiana. I mean, these people on the East Coast and the Left Coast like to call this part of the country back in those days the Rust Belt. Remember? And there was a lot of there was a lot of rust on the belt buckle when they were running things. Remember, remember President Obama four years ago when he talked about those 200,000 manufacturing jobs were gone? He said they were gone for good. He said, what magic wand do you have? Well, we didn't need a magic wand. We just needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs in the first three years, including nearly 10,000 right here in the Hoosier State. And I got to tell you, that, that's a credit to hard work in Hoosiers. It's a credit to this president and his policies. Our allies in the Congress support it. But I also want to say it's also a credit to a governor who believes in Indiana manufacturing and has fought for Hoosier jobs. Join me in thanking Governor Eric Holcomb for putting Hoosier workers first. So the choice could not be more clear, even when it comes to health care. Now, you all remember the disaster of Obamacare, right? Remember all the lies of Obamacare? They said, if, uh, if you like your doctor, you can keep him. Wasn't true. They said, if you like your health insurance, you can keep it. That wasn't true either. They said health insurance premiums would go down. When we took office, health insurance premiums had doubled since Obamacare became law. Now, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they got a plan that, that exports socialized medicine from Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan. They call it a public option to put right in the middle of Obamacare, and it'll set our nation on an inexorable path to socialized medicine. But under President Donald Trump, we got rid of the individual mandate. And we've been fighting to lower the cost of health insurance without growing the size of government. We have lowered the cost of prescription drugs. We passed right to try. And we're going to improve the greatest health care system in the world with free market principles. And America will never be a socialist country. We've been improving health care in this country, and we're going to keep improving it. And i got to give one more credit where credit's due, folks. There's a doctor who became a congressman. He represents a district down near Evansville, Indiana, but he is one of the leading voices on free market health care reform that respects the doctor-patient relationship in America. Would you join me in thanking Indiana Congressman Larry Bouchon? Thank you, Doc. we got a doc in the house. My fellow Hoosiers, we have a choice to make on this economy. I really believe it's a choice between a Trump recovery and a Biden depression. There was a recent study that just came out that said Joe Biden's economic policies would cause America to lose 5 million jobs, and it would cost the average family household income $6,500 a year. So the question I I want you to ask your family members and your neighbors and your coworkers and friends in the next 12 days is this. Who do you really think is going to bring this economy all the way back? 
a career politician who spent 47 years in Washington, D.C., raising taxes, growing government, waving a white flag of economic surrender on trade, or a proven job creator who will keep cutting taxes, fighting for American jobs and workers, for our families, for our jobs, for the great American comeback. We need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. what we need. So we've stood for our national security. We've stood for prosperity, fought for American jobs, American energy, and American workers. And every single day, President Donald Trump has stood for the rule of law. As I stand here today, our President has confirmed more than 230 federal judges, and they are all principled conservatives who will uphold the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, and the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Incredible. You know, last month, we paused as a nation rightly to honor the life and service of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But when the memorials were over, President Trump fulfilled his duty under the Constitution. And he nominated a principled, brilliant, conservative, Hoosier woman to the Supreme Court of the United States of America, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Isn't she great? Indiana is proud of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. What an amazing person. Now, the President and I did call on the Democrats to give Judge Barrett a respectful and dignified confirmation this time around. But we, uh, we have reason to be concerned. As you might remember a couple years ago when she was being confirmed to the Court of Appeals, the ranking Democrat on the Judiciary Committee actually said she was concerned because uh, Judge Barrett's Catholic faith. She actually said, quote, the dogma lives loudly within you. And Hollywood elites have already been criticizing Judge Barrett's faith and her convictions. Well, I got news for the Democrats and their friends in Hollywood. That dogma lives loudly in me. That dogma lives loudly in you. And the right to live and work and worship according to the dictates of our faith lives loudly in the Constitution of the United States of America. Now, the Senate's going to vote this Monday. They got her out of committee today. And after they discharge their duty to advise and consent, I'll make a prediction. Indiana's Judge Amy Coney Barrett is going to become America's Justice Amy Coney Barrett. We're going to fill that seat. Now, Hoosiers deserve to know one more thing about the Supreme Court. After 150 years with nine judges on the Supreme Court. Leading Democrats in Washington, D.C. are talking about packing the court. They are. They're talking about adding seats to the Supreme Court 
so they can appoint activist liberal judges to enact their liberal agenda from the bench. And Joe Biden's been all over the map on this. First he said he wasn't going to answer it. Then he said he was going to answer it after Judge Barrett was confirmed next week. And now he just told a television interview that he's going to answer the question after the election. He called it a live ball. Well, come on, man. The American people deserve a straight answer, Joe. When you're running for the highest office in the land, we got to know if you're going to respect the highest court in the land. You know, I mean, we all know what's going on here, right? I mean, I was born in the morning, but not yesterday morning. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to pack the court with liberal activist judges to advance their left wing agenda if they win the election, but we're not going to let it happen. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years and protect an independent judiciary for generations to come. So we've stood for the rule of law, appointed judges at every level. And we'll stand for that independent judiciary. And President Donald Trump has stood every day with the men and women who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement. And we always will. You know, during my, during my years as a congressman from this state and as your governor, I saw up close the incredible caliber of men and women of law enforcement, city police officers, county sheriffs, our great Indiana State Police. And as I've traveled around this country, I can tell you, the men and women who serve in law enforcement across this state and nation are some of the best people in this country. And they deserve the respect of every American every day. Let's hear it for our law enforcement officers who are here. Now, the President and I will always support the right of peaceful protest. It's enshrined in our Constitution. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Burning businesses is not free speech. Now, for months, all Joe Biden talked about all summer long was peaceful protest, remember? As Americans literally watched businesses in cities around the country burn to the ground. I'll never forget being in Minneapolis just a couple short weeks ago with a wonderful African-American business owner named Flora Westbrook. She started a little salon in Minneapolis 35 years ago. It really became a center of the community. But she told me about the night, just a couple nights after the killing of George Floyd, how she watched the protesters come closer and closer and closer to her little salon until they burned it to the ground. Well, I'm proud to report to you that Floor is getting a lot of support, and we're going to rebuild that salon. But the truth is, her story is one of hundreds and hundreds of stories impacting families of every race and creed and color in major cities around the country. And the truth is, Joe Biden's policies. I believe the policies that he doubled down on 
are contributing to the atmosphere of violence in our cities. You know, when you start to withdraw support or even condemn those who support, people that protect and serve, you only embolden those who would do harm to our families and our communities. Now, Joe Biden explains all of it by saying that he believes America is, quote, systemically racist. And he and Kamala Harris say all the time that they think police in this country have a, quote, implicit bias against minorities. When Joe Biden was asked if he'd cut funding to law enforcement, he said, yes, absolutely. But under President Donald Trump, I'll make you a promise. We're not going to defund the police. Not now, not ever. We're going to back the blue, and we're going to back the blue for four more years. Now, you and I, you and I know what the President knows. And that is, we, we don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and supporting our African-American neighbors and families and other minorities and families in our major cities. We've done both for the last three and a half years, and we'll keep doing both for four more years. Under this administration, we we provide record funding for law enforcement, 4,000 new police officers on the street. This summer, when violence was impacting our cities, we launched Operation Legend, named after a four-year-old little boy who was killed in his bed by violence. And we've already arrested 3,000 violent offenders in cities across the country. But at the same time, at the same time, the last three and a half years, I couldn't be more proud to be vice president in an administration that saw the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans. We have fought for school choice for every family in every city in America. We created 8,000 opportunity zones. We passed criminal justice reform. And this president signed the largest investment in historically black colleges and universities ever. We're going to stand with law enforcement. We're going to stand with our minority communities. And we're going to have law and order in every city, in every state, for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us, God. And finally, when it comes to values, when Joe Biden was vice president, we saw a steady assault on the religious freedom of Americans of every faith. We did. The conscience rights of doctors and nurses and religious charities were compromised. And when Joe Biden was vice president, their administration actually hauled the little sisters of the poor into federal court to force them to compromise their faith to live under the mandates of Obamacare. President Donald Trump, we restored the conscience rights of doctors and nurses and teachers and religious charities. And President Trump ended the assault on the little sisters of the poor, and the Supreme Court made it permanent. And finally, where Joe Biden and Kamala Harris support taxpayer funding of abortion all the way up to the moment of birth and are calling for record increases in funding to the largest abortion provider in America, I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to the most pro-life president in American history.
In our first month in office, this president reinstated the Mexico City policy to make sure taxpayer dollars would never provide or promote abortion. And President Trump signed a bill that allowed states across America to defund Planned Parenthood. We have stood for the unborn, and we will stand for the right to life for four more years. So in our first three years, if you're taking notes, we rebuild our military, we revived the economy, we stood for law and order and liberties in life. And let me say, none of that would have been possible without the strong and consistent support of Indiana's delegation to the United States Congress. So Hoosiers, right after you re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years, we need to send Congressman Jim Banks, Congressman Larry Bouchon back to a new Republican majority in the House of Representatives and retire Nancy Pelosi once and for all. I want Steve Scalise leading a Republican majority in the Congress. I mean, really, when you look at what we were able to accomplish when we had a Republican House and a Republican Senate, all the progress we made as a nation in those first three years is only one way you can describe it. In three short years, we made America great again. We did. And then 2020 arrived and the coronavirus struck from China. But I'm here to tell you, before the first documented case of community spread in the United States, President Trump did what no American president had ever done in our history. He suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. It's true. Now, now, Joe Biden called that xenophobic, remember? He actually said it was hysterical. He wrote in uh, a major newspaper that closing down travel from any country would uh, make things worse. But I can tell you firsthand, having led the White House Coronavirus Task Force for the last eight months, President Donald Trump's decision to suspend all travel from China saved untold American lives, and it bought us invaluable time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. It's true. We reinvented testing. We began before the month of February was out to develop new medicines to begin the process of developing a vaccine. We saw to the manufacture, including here in Indiana, of billions of medical supplies for our incredible doctors and nurses and healthcare workers and first responders. And before the end of this year, we are going to have the first safe and effective coronavirus vaccine with tens of millions of doses for the American people. That's what leadership looks like. Now, we have a ways to go, and we all have a role to play, but I promise you, every step of the way, we're going to keep making sure that our doctors and nurses in hospitals have the supplies and the medicines and the resources to give any Hoosier that's impacted by this pandemic the level of care that we'd want a member of our family to have. We're going to keep working to slow the spread, to protect the vulnerable, to save lives. And where Joe Biden is talking about shutting down our economy, we're opening up America again. We're doing it. I mean, 
After losing 22 million jobs at the height of this pandemic, it's amazing. We've already seen 11 and a half million Americans go back to work in just five months, including almost 300,000 people right here in the Hoosier State. We're working every day to open up America again, and we are opening up America's schools. And I'm proud to report to you, Mrs. Pence is already back teaching in a classroom in that little Christian school near Washington, D.C. really is remarkable to think about all that we accomplished. Men and women, we gather here today because we've just passed through a time of testing. But in 12 days, we're coming to a time for choosing. The choice in this election has never been clearer, but the stakes have never been higher. I mean, when you look at their agenda of higher taxes, open borders, socialized medicine, abortion on demand, a Green New Deal, defunding the police and packing the courts, it's clear. Joe Biden would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for the radical left. Now, Joe Biden said uh, at their convention that democracy is on the ballot. Well, I think our economic recovery is on the ballot. I think law and order are on the ballot. But I also believe there are things much more foundational and fundamental to who we are that are on the ballot as well. You know, in this election, I think it, it's not just whether America is going to end up more conservative or more liberal, more Republican or more Democrat, more red or more blue. I think the choice in this election is whether America remains America. It's whether we're going to chart a course based on our highest ideals of freedom and patriotism, of liberties, and faith and family, or whether we're going to let Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, the Democratic Party, take us down a pathway charted by the radical left to socialism and American decline. So let me say, for our freedom, for all the ideals that have always made America great, my fellow Hoosiers, we have to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden will never be President of the United States. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. It's about what we've done. It's about the choice, and it's about what we have yet to do. I mean, over the next four years, as the President said, we will distribute the vaccine and defeat the China virus. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might and ensure peace through strength. We will make Indiana and America the manufacturing superpower of the world and end our reliance on China. We'll uphold religious liberty, freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms. We'll hire more police will ban sanctuary cities, and we will stop the indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. And as President Trump said at Mount Rushmore, We'll teach our kids to love our country, honor our history, 
and always respect our great American flag. <laughs> Folks, I got to tell you, it's, uh, it's great to be back home again. It really is. And I want to thank you. Thank you for coming out today, but thank you for the honor of serving as your Vice President. It's the greatest honor of my life. I can tell all of you, Karen and I know that uh, everything in our life is a result of uh, the grace of God, the support of my family, and the confidence of the people of Indiana. And we will never let you down. Thank you so much for believing in us. You know, it's hard for me to believe that four years have passed. It's hard for me to believe that. Four years have passed since the day I got the phone call to join this national ticket. I'll never forget it. Like all of you in this room, I, I saw in our candidate four years ago a man who had the leadership qualities, who had the vision, who had the agenda to make America great. We got tipped off that the phone call was going to come in at the governor's residence. It was about 11 o'clock at night. Karen and I had prayed all the way through it. We knew we were going to say yes in a heartbeat. And then the phone rang. And I picked up the phone. And I heard that familiar voice over the phone lines. And he said, Mike, it's going to be great. And you know what? It's been great every single day, and we're going to make it greater for four more years. You know, before I got that phone call, the President and I didn't even know each other that well. I mean, some people think we're a little bit different. But I can tell you, we've become very close friends. I've served alongside this man every day, and I'm going to tell my fellow Hoosiers from my heart. I've seen him when the bright lights are off, there's no cameras around. And I can tell you firsthand, against unrelenting opposition by the Democrats and their allies in the national media, there's never been a day gone by that this president hasn't gotten up and fought to keep the promises that he made to the people of Indiana. Now it's our turn to fight for him. It's on, Indiana. This is it. Okay? So I got a couple things I got to ask you to do before I get back on that airplane you all have made it possible for me to ride in the next 12 days. First and foremost, number one, you need to vote, Indiana. Vote to re-elect President Donald Trump to the White House. Early voting has already started. Karen and I are going to be turning in our ballots tomorrow down in Indianapolis. You can get it done, too. You just go down to Memorial Coliseum. They're open 8 to 4.30 every day. Just go down. And remember, friends don't let friends vote alone. Bring a family member. Bring a neighbor. Bring a co-worker. And vote to re-elect President Trump. Vote to re-elect Governor Holcomb. Vote to re-elect Congressman Banks. Vote Republican. So number one, after you vote with a friend, number two, I, I want you to go tell somebody what you heard here today. I want to go, I want you to go tell somebody why you came here today. 
I see the determination on your faces. I know you, you already know the difference this president's leadership has made, the difference our allies in the Congress have made, coming alongside his agenda for a stronger, more prosperous America. So go tell somebody. Talk to people at worship and at work. And far beyond the boundaries of Indiana, reach out to neighbors and friends, send out an email, pick up the phone, tweet if you must. But let people know why you so passionately support this president and this team and this agenda and all that we can do for four more years. And finally, lastly, I, I would tell you that if you're inclined to bow the head and bend the knee, over the next 12 days, I'd encourage you to do that, too. You know, I know Pastor Hawks got us off on the right foot at this rally. The little girl turned in a question during that vice presidential debate. She talked about how she turned on the TV and it just seems like people were more divided than ever before. But I tried to tell her then, and I believe in my heart, that after traveling all across this country on this journey that Indiana set me on so many years ago, I'll always believe that there's, there's more that unites these United States of America than could ever divide us, and chief among those things is faith. This is a nation of faith. And so I encourage you, in this momentous time, in the midst of a global pandemic, as our economy and our America is getting back on our feet, beginning to move forward, facing such a dramatic choice, I just encourage you to encourage you to pray. Pray with confidence, though, in those ancient words that Americans have clung to through much more challenging times than we could even imagine, that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and turn, he'll do like he's always done in the long and storied history of this nation. He'll hear from heaven and he'll heal this land. This one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America. Pray for all of the American people. It'll make a difference. And I just, uh, and I just know in my heart if all of us do all that we need to do in every hour that remains between now and the close of poll, we're going to have a great victory all across Indiana and all across America. We're going to make Indiana and America stronger than ever before. We're going to make Indiana and America more prosperous than you could possibly imagine. We're going to make Indiana and America more united than ever before. And with Congressman Jim Banks, Congressman Larry Bouchon, and Steve Scalise back in a new Republican majority on Capitol Hill. With Governor Eric Holcomb back in the State House. With President Donald Trump back in the White House for four more years. And with God's help, we will make America great again. Again. Thank you very much, Indiana. God bless you. And God bless America.